Hey, what is this? Oh, man. Hey guys, Rex here. I'm showing you a screen capture view from my computer looking through the Celestron handheld digital microscope pro. I got this deal from Optics Planet and I've been playing with it, kind of figuring out how it works and pretty cool. Um, for the kind of work that I do where I do a lot of teaching, I do some lab work related to that teaching in the field that I'm in, it's nice to be able to zoom in and do macro photography of small objects and get good, clear pictures. Uh, a lot of the displays require that, a lot of the lessons um, trying to explain how stuff works. So this is, I plan to use this to make my presentations a lot better, have a lot better, more clear view of different things. So I'm just playing with it right now here um, focusing it in. This is a digital microscope and it's relatively affordable. It's like $130 or $150, maybe a little less than that. Um, very easy to set up in terms of the mechanics. You just basically attach the post to the base and put the handheld microscope into the mount and basically plug it in with a USB port. Um, the most difficult part I had running this, and we'll go over the features and stuff in a minute, was the software. Um, that's why I'm using screen capture here, is I could not get the original software to record um, the quality footage I wanted to do. Uh, I don't know if I need a driver or if I need something like that. It's uh, beyond my ability to <laughs> wrestle with. So if you're tech savvy, you could probably figure out how the software works. This is actually, I don't I don't think this is the software that was intended to be used in this. This, I think, is some older software. Um, but at any rate, you can. I was still able to utilize this, and we're looking at a few different things here. Um, you can see, okay, there's a cord or, a, a, you know, the phone jack deal. Just kind of looking at some stuff, showing you how it works. And you can... Click the button down there and you can zoom in quite a bit. And then I'm using a manual focus here by turning the knob on the microscope. It's actually an optical focus to make sure I get everything perfect. And kind of taking a look at it up close. Yeah, we're, now we're looking down into a 300 whisper, 300 blackout case that has been spent. We're looking down into it. There are... A number of LED lights around the camera and the microscope. I think there's uh, eight LED bulbs that are able to kind of, uh, this is kind of a, an experiment trying to see how deep down into this uh, cartridge case I can see with those lights. And if I tilt it a little bit, you can kind of see the illumination, um, you know, uh, reflecting in there. And so now I'm flipping the case to its side. <laughs> okay, I'm going to show you the rim. So now I have to refocus it because it's a different focal length, right? Because it's a. Uh... There we go. Okay, taking a look. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And you can inspect the rim of the case. Now, for a lot of different things, quality control, um, you know, even reloading, things like that, you can do some pretty good inspection on different items. I'll show you after a minute here a projectile, but uh, you can see, for example, the crimping around the primer. You can see if there's any cratering to the primer. You can get a good close-up view of whatever you're trying to look at. No matter what field you're in, you can just do that. So let's go to the next video here. Okay. Okay, now we're going to focus in on the tail end. I just have the case stacked up on the table, on the little base. Okay, now I'm focusing it in on the head of the case. And you can see there, zoom in a bit and make it full screen. That is the primer and the center circle is where it's been indented, right, by the firing pin. You can see the crimp marks off to the side. You see how the brass is actually deformed, crimping into mechanically hold that primer into place. And you can see the texture of the brass where it's been deformed upon firing. 
Kind of cool to look at this stuff close up. This is going to be really, really good for the new series I'm doing on Patreon, the Real Dope series, where I'm going over all this stuff again in greater detail and more of a discussion format. If you guys want to dig that, I'll leave a link to my Patreon page below, but we're going to get into a lot more details on a lot of this stuff. You can see over here, where the brass has been, looks like the, see the smear of the brass? <laughs> see, you can see a lot of the details. And you can note too how, you know, the rim is not perfectly smooth around when you really zoom into it. This is one of the reasons why you're going to see shot dispersion is because the cumulative imperfections in ammunition and uh, mechanical components of whatever system you're using are going to add up. When you zoom in close, you can see it a lot better. So let's uh, go to the next video here. Okay. Okay, so now we're looking into a cutaway of a chamber. Uh, a friend of mine who went to gunsmithing school, they had to do one of these. Now this is corroded. It's been laying in the drawer for a little while. Um, and you can see where the cartridge fits into the chamber here. This is a cutaway. And this is something where I can show something that would be hard to see by looking down the breech, right? So we got a cutaway and I can show the macro photography, all how the the cuts are made. You can, you can see the the throat area there where the lands and grooves start and you can see the transition of where that bore jump occurs. And so I'm focusing the camera here, zooming in a little more, trying to focus it a little bit with the manual focus. And um, you can get different parts of the depth. Okay, let's uh, go to the next one here. Okay, so this is also cool too. Like I, I found this little locket deal, I think in the yard. Um, it was like just laying in the dirt. And um, we're taking a closer look at it. I never noticed because it's so, so tiny. I don't know if these are diamond chips or if they're glass or what it, this is, but it appears to be maybe silver because um, there is some tarnishing there. I mean, it appears at a glance to be silver. The guy would have to do some tests to find out, I suppose, for sure. If I'm not a jeweler, so I don't know. But it's, it's just cool. You can look at this kind of stuff if you're a jeweler or an inspector uh, for you know like inspecting coins or silver coins, gold coins, whatever, stamps, stuff like that. This is going to be really cool. Also, if you're trying to advertise something, right, it's always hard to get a close-up picture of something of small details for if you're going to post um, something for sale if you're s selling things online very 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 cool handy way to get a super nice close-up digital image in HD of whatever you're looking at pretty handy for that I would think okay now if you guys can tell me what this is I'll buy you a Daniel Webster cigar what is that quiz time <laughs> Some kind of alien spacecraft looking thing, huh? What is that? Now we're going to go down. What is that? Reminds me of Star Wars. Remember that thing that, uh. <laughs> I don't know. Looks like the microphone, right? This is a I close up on the sensors on the iPhone. Just kind of taking a look at it. Kind of neat. This is not like a hardcore, you know, biology grade Zeiss. Uh, microscope but it is very very handy for uh, macro photography very very cool for that I think that's kind of neat I'm gonna take a look over here in a second I'm gonna scan over so now because we're looking at something that's a little different because there's a shiny outside to it right because there's like plastic or glass over the top but I want to see down into it so I adjust the lighting down a bit and so by having an adjustable wheel for the light on the microscope you can get a complete different view of different parts of whatever object you're looking at and if you tweak the focus and the light just between those two things alone man you can really uh, bring out whatever contrast of whatever um, deal you're trying to look at oh look at this little plastic green army guy I just basically took a bunch of stuff that was laying on the counter and put it on here for the review just to kind of show you what a guy can do. It's too cold for bugs right now. I guess I could go out in the yard and get a pine cone or, you know, you could do a lot of nature stuff with the kids. You could, uh, you know, get a worm and put them on there and see what, or snail or, you know, uh, 
lot. I, I remember when I was little, my father had an optical, you know, microscope, a cheap one, and he had to plug it in, and the bulb would burn out every five minutes or whatever. And uh, we would just spend hours looking at all kinds of stuff, and we'd run around the house like trying to find a, a fly, catch a fly, so you can put them in there and look at their feet and look at their wings. You know, it's just this is cool to have it a, a digital because you don't have that same strain. Um, that you would have by looking through a microscope can be a lot of fatigue on the eyes if you do that for hours. I did used to work in labs where I had to look at microscopes uh, pretty much all day um, for a geology lab deal that I was in one job I had. And nice to have a digital way of seeing that. So I don't know if you're, I mean, there's a lot of industry applications where this could be handy too, where you can actually log things. Um, <laughs> if you're trying to log the you know, the, the tillings coming out of a drilling rig for the uh, what what layer you're drilling through or whatever. You usually try to make a notation of that, but digitally, it'd be very easy to capture images like this. Just bam, snap. Here's an actual photograph of what we're looking at because sometimes it's hard to communicate exactly what you see verbally. A picture is worth a thousand words, so there's a lot of jobs where for a lot of different scientific logging even, where this would be handy. Now we're looking at the edge of a, what is this, a Victoria Knox Swiss Army knife, just kind of inspecting the edge. And it does look like I could, yeah, just slice an apple, right? Look at all that stuff on there that a guy would eat. <laughs> yeah, uh, you got the little, little bit of corrosion. You can kind of see the finish and... Um, can kind of see a little bit of a it looks like stained there with something right i think I, I use this to cut a lot of cardboard boxes and stuff like that it's actually a pretty sharp knife still but you can inspect your blade you know you can do all kinds of neat stuff with a tool like this it's just so handy there's like infinite applications or something like this is so cool right uh let's take a look at something else here what's this all right Quiz time, guys. What is this? What are we looking at now? A little bit out of focus here. So I'm going to try to get it centered. Just moving it with my fingers here. And I'm going to tweak the focus knob just a tiny bit here in a minute. So this is like real time. Not editing out this part where you focus. I think it's important for you guys to kind of see that. See, now I'm looking at an object below the object in the foreground. Focused in down on the texture there. It looks kind of like a... Yeah, I'm going to get in trouble for that, I bet you. It's just the texture on the grip of a cold steel knife. Oh, it's an iron cross. He's the devil. Look at that. So that that's the texture. I think that's a... What, what knife is that? It's my cold steel folder. You can kind of look around the edge. Look at the screws. <laughs> yeah. Kind of fun, right? I don't know. I can, I, I can play at this thing all day long. I'm going to skip to the next video here real quick. Now, this is a 300 grain Sierra Match King for 338. And I'm, it's rolling on the little base. It's not quite exactly... I didn't uh, level this out. But here you can examine, and I'm going to use this again, and I'll expound on this in greater detail. There's a lot of subtleties to anything in engineering. Um, you're talking about long-range shooting equipment, and you get the same deal. Those tiny subtleties, I don't know if you can see that deformation and the heel of the bullet there on the base of it. Even though it's a bow-tailed bullet, you can see the slight bulging in certain areas. That's just a reality of manufacturing. Um, and that's stuff you might not notice at a glance, but again, that's cumulatively why a guy is going to have shot dispersion, right? And if we were looking at parts for, uh, you know... I don't know, lawnmower, if we're looking at the wear on the lobes on a camshaft, if you're an automotive mechanic, or whatever you're doing, you can actually see in a lot better, easier detail, or you could even show that to your customers, right? Like, oh, here's what wore out. Well, I can't see it. Well, okay, let me put it under here. Send them a picture, you know, text it to them or whatever, right? So pretty handy little tool. I, I actually really like this little microscope deal is going to be very handy for what I'm doing. I intend to use this for my tutorials, like I said, again, on the Real Dope series on the Patreon channel. I'm moving a lot of my tutorials over to the Patreon channel, um, and that's where we're going to do a lot of that. So this is a handy tool. Check it out, Optics Planet 
Space.com has a lot of stuff. I was looking at their space telescopes. I'm kind of hoping that I can grab one of them as well because, man, that's just fun. I, I really enjoy looking up at nature and looking down at the beautiful creation that was made for us and all the different infinite wonder and all that stuff. I mean, it's just it's cool to be able to, to get out of um, the digital matrix and use the digital technology for something that's actually constructive, right? So this is a good use of digital technology and computers, in my opinion, because you can use it in real life to examine real life things. All right, I hope that review was cool for you guys. Oh, look at my, look at my finger. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> All right, I hope that was fun for you guys, and we'll catch you on the next one. Rex out.